Hello, this is Sam from Forum Labs. In this video, I'm going to be showing you all how to set up, prepare, and orientate a job for 3D printing restorative models using Forum Labs Preform software. And in this video, I will be going through how to set up cases for removable die models as well as solid restorative models. So, with your program open, the first thing I like to do is make sure I have the correct material and layer height or setting selected. So if you go over to the right, you can edit the job settings and also select your printer if you'd like to here, or in the end, doesn't matter. And we're gonna select model material. So model is what we use for restorative models. It, it has very, very high accuracy. And really, I only recommend 100 or 50 micron layer settings for restorative models. Um, they both are very, very accurate. They've been tuned. Um, and the only difference is 100 is a, obviously a little bit quicker because it prints more uh, height at each uh, pass. But uh, the 50 micron settings look uh, a bit more smooth and, and a very fine featured model. 100 will absolutely produce accurate margins and good die fits uh, and overall accuracy but the aesthetics are a bit better in 50. So it depends on your situation and what output you like. I usually like uh, or recommend trying both. So I'm gonna have model 50 selected for this job. And to load in your files, you can either drag them directly into the window using uh, you know, Windows uh, you know, File Explorer to find them, or you go up to the top right, open. And I actually have it here linked already to my uh, my files, but you know, locate your files either in the 3Shape Manufacturing or uh, ExoCAD Manufacturing directory. You can drag and select all of them, uh, of course, and then open them up. And this 3Shape file actually comes in uh, quite good, so it's got a great orientation already, and, and this is really pretty quick to start and work on this job. But for this demo, I wanted to show an example where you can have um, a different situation happen. So let me load this file in, if I could. Uh, open, don't save. And sometimes you'll get files that will load in at incorrect angulation or orientation. And so the best way to start uh, with these types of cases, and it's probably best practice to do this even on models when they do seem flat or in the correct orientation, is you go to the orientation tool on the left here, click this, and then my favorite tool is select base. So if you click on select base, uh, it then uh, brings up an arrow when you hover over uh, parts of the model. Uh, so all you do is you left click on what you want to snap down to the build plate. And we're going to do this even for parts that we're going to put on supports or wraps because it corrects uh, and makes the, the die uh, base parallel to the build platform. And, and that's what we want. So, and you'll also notice, I, I've set up in this example, let me just hide the other parts. If you ever want to hide a model, um, it's on the, on the right hand side. But um, so you, most of the time, it's not uh, very used. So I put this die in as an example. Um, so this die was set up in Model Builder at an angle. And we do not recommend angled dies. Straight dies fit much better, much more consistently. But if you do have a case like this, it's important to print the shaft of the, the, um, of the die uh, as perpendicular to the build plate as possible. So the way to fix this or set this up is if you use the view tools here in the top right, you can actually get a, a perfect sideway, sideways view of the die. So, and then left click on it and this orientation sphere will come up. Grab the, uh, the outside edge of that and you can just do this by eye, but really the goal here is you want these walls to be as straight up and down as possible. And that will be a much better print outcome. And if you want to be really careful, you can even use um, the rotate tool. So it pretty much goes from the front view to the right view. And if you do the front and the right, you pretty much have both uh, sides or angles of that die. So again, I'll just do that quick rotation here. And now this die uh, shaft is completely perpendicular straight from the build plate. So this would be ready to, to nest or add supports on and print. But going back to my example, um, let me just get the, um, let's start with actually the solid um, or antagonist uh, models. So 
the, the, really the way to think about this um, workflow is in three parts. Uh, models that don't really require any special treatment or support. Um, I, those are typically solid models or antagonist or orthodontic or, or models without any complex geometry. And then there's also how to set up for, for dyes, so um, restorative dyes um, and things like that. And then lastly, um, your removable dye models with sockets have one consideration which I'll be showing as well. But again, f for this part, this is a solid model and the antagonist model. It is flat to the build plate, and for these models, you don't have to do anything. You could literally click print right now, and these would print great. This is the right way to do it, flat to the build plate. So I'm just gonna not even mention these again in this video, but you don't really have to do anything. You don't have to support these, unless you have a crazy overhang on, on one of the teeth uh, or something like that. Um, but in that case, you probably should reorientate your occlusal plane in CAD software to produce a better output. But back to uh, the next step here I want to talk about is how to nest um, dies. So I'm going to do three shapes dies first, and then I'll do exocads. They're slightly different, but very similar. So again, I'm just going to uh, use my orientation tool, select base, snap these down. Even the ones that look flat, I'm just going to click on them anyway. It's super quick and easy. And, and then we have it like that. Um, and so I have three dies here. I have a, a posterior um, number three, I believe, and two anterior dies. And so you'll notice uh, there are um, pinholes in the sides and flat bases. So first thing we need to do is support these, these uh, dies. So and you can individualize, you can add supports to certain parts on the build. So you just select your three dies, you hit edit supports, and there's a couple th things I change in supports. Uh, one is we want to have raft type full for dies, so we're doing a full raft for dies. You can have a raft label or not, it's up to you. And the touch point size comes in default at 0.7. Change this to 0.4. And lastly, open up advanced settings, which is this little carrot down, height above raft is default five, I change this to two. Once, that, once that's set, uh, and again with your dies on the job selected, you hit edit and it'll hide everything else. You'll notice everything will go in red at first, but that's okay. So just place one support on and you'll notice that it'll, it'll be removed out of red. And the reason why I'm not just auto generating these supports is that with the 0.4 millimeter uh, support uh, touch, you need many more, and I like to strategically place them. And if you're worried about, oh, these are going to be too many supports, you'll notice in uh, my next video on how to post-process these models, these supports rip right off. Uh, there's really very little to do. It looks like a lot, but it's, it's needed for the accuracy that we want, and they just rip right off at the 0.4 millimeter uh, touch point size. So you'll notice I put four in the corners, and for this die, um, you'll notice that there's a, a, a bit of a, a, a angle to this part. Really, the first part of this die that's going to be printed is this bottom inner um, part. So I just I do the corners as, as well on this, and then maybe I'll do two in the middle, and that looks really sufficiently supported. And then it's very important to support the. Uh, the socket here, or not the socket, but the hole, because if you don't, you can get some sag in the middle, and we need this hole to be completely printed so we can do our assessment of fit um, on the model later in the process. So you don't have to uh, put a ton here, but I put one on the wall that's building up to the top of the circle on both sides, So and you can sort of pick the middle, and then I do one sort of towards the top, maybe on one side like this in the back. Uh, if it'll let me. You notice that it's saying uh, failed to add support because it, it couldn't find a place to get that support to be uh, to be stuck to something. But So I just moved forward until it allowed me to do it. So this die, this first anterior die, is good to go. I'll just do the second anterior die really quickly. You'll notice I'll do the four corners. This die is slightly larger than the first. So, you know, you could do um, uh, these four corners as well. And, you know, I, I maybe uh, two tight ones right here. And if you want to be really, really careful, you can even do um, two there on the outside. So that's really well supported on all the sides. Again, we have our hole, so I'll do front, back, 
and put one in the middle here. So that's good. And then lastly, the post here, the bigger of the dies. So this one's gonna have look like a ton of supports, but again, I assure you, this is completely worth the time and energy because this support um, or, um, time that you're spending here will produce much, much more accurate, consistent, um, and reliable restorative dyes. And of course, this is something that really requires a ton of accuracy and consistency. So that's why we do this. Uh, I am working generally on making this process a bit more automated, but that's to come. So for now, we're just manually adding your supports well around the perimeter. And again, remember, this darker part or rectangle here is actually the first part of the job that's gonna print. So we need these edges well um, supported and the middle as well. So I'll just do these as, uh, these quickly here. And you can see I've pretty much got a method to the madness where I, um, I'm i filling this sort of in a, a, a square sort of a way. And you'll notice I never really put the supports uh, on the edges if I can. So like we want to make sure this edge is completely clear. So during insertion, you know, we're not ripping uh, supports off of a critical uh, area like that. And again, we want to make sure this first part of the print, this bottom triangle here, or uh, sorry, a square or rectangle, is really well supported because it's really the foundation of this print. A uh, couple more supports on the hole, and uh, maybe I'll just get rid of this one and put that one on there. So that's that looks great, and we'll hit apply and I'll show you the result. So you can see we got a bit of a funny looking support, but these dies are completely supported and ready to go. Something else that's really important, to improve the reliability of die printing, overlap your wraps, just like this. Have a significant amount of overlap. What this does is it creates a better support, uh, base structure on the raft, and it makes the printing just a bit more reliable. You know, it's not a huge deal, but you know, one out of a couple hundred prints, uh, it might save you. So, so overlap your rafts. I like to do them in kits. So um, if I have a, a couple quads with just molars, I'll put those together. If I got a more comprehensive case, I'll just put those dies all in one shot. So that's dies. And then the, the last one I want to show you is the, um, the uh, operative model or the, the pin model, socket model. So let me just bring up all my models really quick. Um, and generally, um, for you ExoCAD viewers, just follow the same sort of steps that I did um, for uh, the three-shaped dies. Uh, your dies will be more of an organic shape of the tooth, but again, change touch points sizes and your height above raft, and and just go around the edge, not completely on it, but right close to it, and and make sure you have enough supports to work around and have the whole edge completely covered. The nice thing about the ExoCAD die is there's no secondary transition plane, usually. So if you get this edge really well supported, it's a fantastic start to um, to having this die print really accurately. So just like that. And you know, somebody's probably wondering, well, do I have to do this for every case? You know, you could totally automatically generate supports with the default settings, and it might be totally fine for you. But these techniques that I'm showing are really the way to get the highest reliability and accuracy possible. So there's the ExoCAD die. And it looks like a lot, but I assure you, these just rip off and there's very, very little left over. So the next important thing is um, the hole, the insertion hole on the side of the operative model. So keep my support settings the same for touch point size and height above raft, but the really important thing is I'm gonna do none for the raft type. So we're not doing a raft, we're still gonna print this model directly to the build platform, but we're gonna be adding some supports on these holes. So once I have none, make sure my touch point size is 0.4, you have the model selected and you hit edit. And it hides everything else, and again, if these holes are not properly supported, they can have some sag when they print. And then it's not a full round circle. And when you're lining up these dies uh, and making sure they're completely inserted into the socket all the way, this is really critical to ensuring that. Because if, if you could imagine, if it isn't aligned, um, you know, then your prep uh, could be higher and uh, you'd be pretty much adjusting occlusion uh, or contacts even that is wrong. So just really simply again same fundamentals on the other uh, holes if you want to be really careful you could do four but pretty much three uh, support points working up the side uh, of the hole there and as you can see 
they're, the supports it adds are very, very minor. So just repeat this process across the model, get all your holes completely um, uh, set up, and you'd be good to go. Now, last point here, and last thing I want to go through, is the best job setup. So like how to um, position your models and parts on the build plate. So I have a system that I always use and it's been really, really accurate, reliable and everything else. So it's important to notice that there's a front uh, view and there's also a mixer side. So front and mixer side, that's what we're looking at. And again, I'm gonna use the view arrows to get completely straight down and explain this. But I line up my dies, so front straight up, and put them all in the middle of the build plate like this in a line. And then I'll put my um, anterior anatomy facing in towards it. Um, and if they're uh, quad models, I would just uh, line them straight towards or perpendicular from the line of dies that you have. And you can see this uh, model has um, th uh, four restorations if you include the pontic, and it also has the adjacent teeth um, removable. So if you could do individual contacts and seatment and stuff like that. Um, so there's uh, how that's set up. Uh, one last very important thing I want to point out. Um, Sometimes, especially with the Jason teeth, you can get kind of funny angles off of them, like this. And this this is pretty steep. Anytime you see, like for example, on this left side here, these totally are fine. No support needed, no support needed on this. But again, look at this angle. It starts to almost get um, like a cliff overhang, right? So just take the time and check out your dies. Add one, maybe two, and in this case, a couple uh, small supports on those edges um, and, and overhangs, and you're going to have a much better surface quality, uh, finish, and of course, accuracy. And when you're seating these things in, it's all about accuracy and consistency. So again, uh, overlap your rafts, have the dies go running through the middle, and put your models in towards the middle. Um, and as you can see, I have my anterior facing in. And the nice thing is if you had an articulator backing on these models, you know, it wouldn't matter. And you could even, uh, you know, put a small quad in there if you didn't use articulator backings or whatever. So that's how I would do it. And then once your job's set up, uh, you just send it to the printer. So that's the big orange button here on the left. You select what printer uh, you are using. And you can see I have model um, in my printer already and it's ready to go and you can change the name this name actually comes in default uh, from the file name if you saved it I always recommend saving your preform jobs just in case and you upload the job send it to the printer you go in the printer set it up and uh, hit go that's it and uh, hopefully this helps there is a um, written step-by-step -step version online on our support page uh, refer to that as well especially if you want specifics on um, say touch point size or anything like that. Uh, hopefully this was helpful and thanks for watching.